Well, let's take this isosceles triangle and place it on the coordinate plane. Now, there's a lot of ways I could do it. I could put a vertex at the origin there. I could place it like this. I could place it like this. But, you know, what I really like is if I were to take it this way, take advantage of the x and y axis being perpendicular and hence having a right angle, I might want to arrange it like that. And right there, I'm looking at this. If I draw my triangle this way, then you see each of the two legs are aligned to one of the axes, x and y respectively, so that when I look at the coordinates, I can see right away a distance of 7. The change in x in this case, and here the change in y for a distance of 7. And I can see right away from the coordinates that this is an isosceles right triangle. Now let's put a triangle on this set of axes. If I place this magenta triangle this way, this leg has a length of 2. And the third side could be anywhere. After all, it is scalene. Not very exciting. Maybe I arranged it this way. Maybe again I split this side, straddling the origin there. Third vertex could be out here. Don't like that too much either. Maybe you put it this way. This is a little bit better. So this distance would represent the two meters on the one side. Or I could have put it this way. So either of these last two look pretty feasible for me. I probably would have gone with that. Well, let's take this square with side length of S. I can place it here. I can place it here. I can place it many places on this coordinate plane. You probably figured I'd rather have it oriented this way. Maybe I want the origin in the center of the square. Maybe I want the origin here in the middle of one side. But let me place it right here just for a minute. I'll show you what I like about this. Look at the coordinates. Ah, right there. This makes a lot of sense. Move this square out of the way. Look at this distance. S0. So I can see from the origin a distance of S. 0S is also a distance of S from the origin. And the coordinates of C would be SS. I like that arrangement. Now let's make a right triangle on the axis here. And I'm going to use take advantage of the x and y axis containing a right angle. So I'll use 0, 0 as one of my vertices. And I could start just by putting these two sides in right here. So I'll call this triangle ABC. And I guess B is going to be the origin. And I can see if that's going to be my triangle, this side has a length of R. This side has a length of S. And then I could draw my third side. So there you go, a triangle where I've got conveniently paced on the axes. Well, let's take the triangle from the previous exercise. I think we've already showed you. If you use my delta notation or change in x, change in y, we could easily say we've got sides of R and S, and I know what the hypotenuse would be. If we use the distance formula between these two points, we could calculate it this way by substitution. I always take the point on the left to be x1, y1, x2, y2. Substitute in there, and look what you've got. Simplify it. Pretty straightforward. That's the same because, of course, I'm going to square that negative s, which will make it positive. So let's, um, let's take this figure and rearrange it. Let's suppose I put it there in the second quadrant instead of the first, and I'll put the s variable on the x-axis and the r on the y. And you can see I'm going to get the exact same thing. 
I still have a right triangle with legs of R and S. I'm going to make my substitution here. I'll choose this to be x1, y1, x2, y2. Make my substitutions. And what do you know? I get the exact same expression. So it doesn't matter how we arrange it. We just want to make it some way that's convenient, that makes sense to us. And honestly, most of us would have set it up this way, like the green triangle.